begins with brown dwarfs, failed stars that are a huge disappointment to their mother. Why is the brown one the failed ones? I, I feel kind of offended, I'm not gonna lie. Yo guys, what is up this video? I'm reacting to the largest stars in the universe, made by Aki, I cannot say his name. I probably... Cuz... Giz... Giz... I can't English, probably, as you can clearly tell. But, I was actually gonna make a video about this, but... I actually was very intrigued, cuz I don't know, I really like space stuff, I don't know. Like, black holes and all that crap. And like, you know, dwarf stars and all that shit. I don't know, it's probably just cuz I like superheroes, but like... It's intrigued me. Ah, I am good at English. No, I'm not. I'm a liar. I can't even read my own name properly. This isn't about names, this is about stars. So, let's get into the video. What is the largest star in the universe? And why is it that large? And I'll what are the stars thing right now. anyway? My heart. Things that would like to be stars. We begin our journey with Earth. Not to learn anything, just to get a vague sense mm. of scale. I wonder the what Earth is. things that have some star-like properties are large gas giants or sub-brown dwarfs. Like Jupiter, the most Jupiter? massive yep. planet Ooh, in the solar that. system. 11 times larger and 317 times more massive than Earth, and more or less made of the same stuff as our Sun. Just much, much less of it. Times. The transition towards stars begins with brown dwarfs, failed stars that are a huge disappointment to their mind. Why is the brown one the failed ones? I, I feel kind of offended, I'm not gonna lie. I'm joking. I guess the universe just has it for us. They have between 13 and 90 times the mass of Jupiter. So even if we took 90 Jupiters and about that. so big. them at each other, although fun to watch, it wouldn't be enough to create a star. Interestingly, adding lots of mass to a brown That's dwarf crazy. doesn't make it much bigger, just like, it's to Earth. inside Imagine denser. that like 10 times and the times are by 17. This increases the pressure in the core up. enough to make certain nuclear fusion reactions happen slowly and the object glow a little. So brown dwarfs are a sort of glowy gas giant that don't fit into any category very well. But we oh, want to talk about stars, dream. not fail. You know what? I'm gonna do Sam. Just turn around. Wow! Jesus just came. Build one of the stars. So let's move on. Main sequence stars. Main sequence stars. Once large gas that? balls pass a certain mass threshold, their cores become hot and dense enough to ignite. Hydrogen is fused to helium in their cores, releasing tremendous amounts of energy. Stars that do that are called main sequence stars. The more massive a main sequence star is, the hotter and brighter it burns, and the shorter its life is. Once the hydrogen burning phase is over, stars grow, up to hundreds of thousands of times their original size. But these giant phases only last for a fraction of their lifespan. So we'll be comparing stars at drastically different stages in their lives. This doesn't make them less impressive, but maybe it's good to keep in mind that we'll be comparing babies to adults. Now back yes, to true. the beginning. The smallest real right, stars show me the big are one. red dwarfs, about 100 times okay, the mass that. of Jupiter, barely massive enough to fuse hydrogen to helium. Just 100 times the mass of Jupiter, you know, very something massive, small. They are small, not very hot, and shine pretty dimly. They are the only stars hot, in the know? main sequence that don't grow <laughs> once they die, but sort of fizzle out. Red oh, dwarfs are by far the most abundant type in the universe. Because they burn their fuel very slowly, it lasts them up to 10 trillion years, a thousand times the current age of the universe. Yeah. For example, one of the billion. closest stars to Earth is a trillion. red dwarf star, Barnard star, but it shines too dimly to be seen without a telescope. We made a whole video on red dwarfs. I think I see it right now, more. actually. It's, it's right over there. The next stage are stars like our sun. To say the sun dominates the solar system is not doing it justice, since it makes up 99.86% of all its mass. It burns far hotter and brighter than red dwarfs, which reduces its lifetime to about 10 billion years. The sun is seven times more massive than... 10 billion star, years? But that How short? He's making this sound like it's just, I know it's like meant to be not as big as, you know, but like, just think about it, okay? Humans, you know, live like 120, like that, 10 billion years. 10 billion. Alright, I... 300 times brighter with twice its surface temperature. 
Let's go bigger. Trust was like 2000 ish. Small the changes one. in mass produce enormous changes in a main sequence star's brightness. The brightest star in the night sky, Sirius, is two solar masses with a radius 1.7 times that of the okay, sun. Okay, I've heard about this but one. I'm not going to lie. Is nearly 10,000 degrees Celsius, making it shine 25 times brighter. Burning that hot That's reduces 10, its total 000. lifespan by four times to 2.5 billion years. Stars close so to 10 is. times the mass of our sun have that. surface temperatures near 25,000 20, degrees Celsius. Beta Centauri contains two of these massive stars, each shining with about 20,000 times the power of the sun. That's a lot of power coming from something only 13 times larger, but they'll only burn for about yeah. 20 million years. Entire Probably generations of years, these long. blue stars die in the time it takes the sun to orbit the galaxy once. So is this the formula? The more massive, the larger the star. The most massive star that we know is R136A1. It has bro, 350 not... so that's a masses bro. and is nearly 9 million times brighter than the sun. And yet, nine despite million. its tremendous mass and power, it's barely 30 times the size of the sun. The star is so extreme and barely held together by gravity that it loses 321,000 billion tons of material through its stellar wind every single second. Every stars single I'll say, well, how long? Extremely rare second. Because they break the rules of star formation a tiny bit. When supermassive stars are born, they burn extremely Size hot massive. and bright, and this blows away any extra gas that could make them more massive. So the mass limit for such a star is around 150 times the sun. Stars like mm. R136A1 are probably formed through the merger of several high mass stars in dense star forming regions and burn their core hydrogen in only a few million years. So this means else they are rare is melting away and like... short lived. From here, the trick to going bigger isn't adding more mass. To make the biggest Amazing. stars, we have to kill them. Red giants. When main sequence stars begin to exhaust also had this hydrogen in, science, in their so. core, it contracts, making it hotter and denser. This leads to hotter and faster fusion, which pushes back against gravity and makes the outer layers swell in a giant phase. And these stars become truly giant indeed. For example, Gakrux. Only 30% more massive than the Sun, it has swollen to about 84 times its radius. Still, when the sun enters the last stage of its life, it will swell and Look how tiny it looks in comparison. 200 times its current radius. In this final phase of its life, it will swallow the inner planets. And if you think that's impressive, let's finally introduce the largest this. stars in the universe. I'm sorry, Terraform and Mars, right? Hypergiants. Hypergiants are the giant phase of the most massive stars in the universe. They have an enormous surface area that can radiate an insane amount of light. Being so How large, they? they're basically blowing themselves apart, as gravity at the surface is too weak to hold on to the hot mass which is lifted away in powerful stellar winds. Pistol star is 25 solar Look, masses, it's like a but pixel. 300 times the radius of the sun, a blue hypergiant aptly named for its energetic blue starlight. It's hard to say exactly how long Pistol Star will live, but probably just a few million years. Even larger than oh, the blue so hypergiants are the yellow hypergiants. The most well studied is Rho Cassiopeia, a star so bright it can be seen with the naked eye, although it's thousands of light years from Earth. At 40 light solar masses, years. this star is around 500 times the radius of the Sun and 500,000 times brighter. If the Earth were as close to Rho Cassiopeia 500 as it is to the sun, times bright. Imagine just looking at that shit. And you would be Your eyeballs dead. will melt. Melt Yellow me. hypergiants are very rare, though. Only 15 are known. This means they're likely just a short-lived intermediate state, as a star grows or shrinks between other phases of hypergiantness. With bro, red hypergiants, crazy, we reach the largest stars known to us. Probably the largest stars even possible. So, who's the winner of this oh, insane contest? Wait, wait, like 10 years. This be like a well, new form the or truth shit. is, we don't know. Red hypergiants are extremely bright and far away, which means that even tiny uncertainties in our measurements can give us a huge margin of error for their size. 
Worse still, yeah. red hypergiants are solar system sized behemoths that are blowing themselves apart, which makes them harder to measure. As we do more science and our instruments improve, whatever the largest star is will change. The star that is currently thought to be among the largest we've found is Stevenson 218. It was probably born as a main sequence star a few tens of times the mass of the Sun and has likely lost about half its mass by now. While typical red hypergiants are 1,500 times the size of the Sun, the largest rough estimate places Stevenson 218 at 2,150 solar radii and shining with almost half a million times the power of the Sun. Half a million. By comparison, the Sun seems like a grain of dust. That's what I'm saying. Is this like this? Really have a way of grasping this kind of scale. Even My at brain light is speed, not. it would take you 8.7 hours to travel around it once. The fastest plane on Earth would take around 500 light years. Drop 500 sun, years. It would fill Saturn's orbit. As it evolves, oh, it so would this probably is shed it even more awesome, mass right? and we'll shrink fun. down into another hotter hypergiant phase, accumulate heavy elements in its core before finally exploding in a core collapse yeah. supernova, giving its gas back to the galaxy. This gas will then go on to form another generation of stars of all sizes, starting the cycle of birth and death again to light up our universe. Mean, Let's crazy, make this bro. journey again, but this time without the talking. The universe is big. There are many large things in it. Jupiter, better than Earth. Jupiter, better than freaking stop. So you thought that was the bigger one, didn't He's like, you really think this is the bigger one? Nah, this one. If you want to. You physically couldn't see the Earth if you tried. I mean, I tried pretty hard and I couldn't freaking see it. What? 500,000 times brighter. Like, you, have you ever looked at the sun yet and be like, ah, oh, that hurts? Imagine looking at the 500,000 times stronger one. Imagine that. You'd be like, oh, where did my side go? I don't know where you would say that. I mean, you probably would say, how can I not see? That, that was stupid. But, if you guys enjoyed the video, you know, obviously the link's in the description because, you know, I actually really want you guys to watch this video. You know, maybe download it, maybe like, download it? What's it? Watch it. Like, this is a very beautifully made video, and his voice is very soothing. You feel me? And this is very informative. I'm not gonna lie. I cannot even comprehend how freaking big the stars are, okay? Because Earth was literally a pixel on my screen. But, if you guys enjoyed the video, you know, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and, uh, peace.